Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a new video. Today I'm going to be talking about healing M plus in pugs, some lessons learned from my journey and some tips that will help you not only enjoy the process much more, but also how to become a little bit better player playing with random people. The usual disclaimer is still here, I'm not the best player in the world, but I've managed to pug way over 3k IO on different characters, different seasons and different tunes, so here's what I'm going to tell you about this journey. The very first thing is that playing in a team is considerably easier. I think that's a myth because maintaining the team, having the same people play at the same time, at the same level, that's actually very very hard to maintain. We've seen very high end teams fall apart, which tells you enough. And although it's true that it's easier for example to play a plus 28 in an organized team than to pug a plus 25 or a plus 24, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have more fun in a team, actually probably quite the opposite, it's going to be more fun to play in a pug because if things go wrong you can just leave and if there is something that you don't like in your team you actually have to put up with it. As for how far you can pug compared to how far you can get playing in a team, there is probably quite significant difference there but keep in mind that the higher keys you want to push and the further you want to get, you have to invest more time. Yes, that's on you, I've been there, you get a team and you don't magically start doing plus 30s, you actually have to go through a learning process with them and go through the levels one by one. So in short, there are no shortcuts and you can go as high as you want but you have to invest the time to get there. So now that we agree that pugging is not bad, we also have to agree that not all classes are equal. No matter what the tuning is, some classes are much easier to play in pugs compared to others and of course if you have your pick, stick with it and don't worry, you can pug keys on any class but if you have an option, you can try to choose a reactive class for pugs compared to the proactive ones. The reason for that is that in Pugs there is a lot of unpredictable damage, people are missing interrupts, they're eating mechanics in the face, etc. So you need to be able to react in situations like that and try to salvage the pool. In that regard, I can recommend Holy Priest, Restoration Shaman, Holy Paladin, all of these are relatively reactive classes that will be allowing you to cast spells to fix people's mistakes. At the same time, for example Restoration Druid is a lot of fun but if you have to deal with unpredicted damage then it kind of lacks a little bit. Same with the Disc Priest and it's not that you cannot do it on these classes, it's just going to be a tiny bit harder when there's no coordination in your group. So if you're making a choice, my advice is think about it in this perspective and don't care so much what is meta and what is not. Because the meta classes are determined by the high end pushing teams, but they are teams and you're playing in a pug, so your game is completely different and there might be a class that is not meta, but it suits your purposes much better than the meta ones. If you're interested, subscribe to this channel as I have a video ranking the healers from perspective of how good they are in pugs coming up shortly. The next thing on the list, even if you pick a reactive healer, you need to be proactive when it comes to communication and gameplay. Now this is not going to be easy because I know you want to sit there, press your buttons, do your thing. But sometimes the difference between wiping or surviving a pool could be a small ping that brings the attention to a mob that let's say needs to be interrupted or stunned. So my advice here is make micros and keybinds that will help you to communicate with your team on the move and practice using them as much as you can. Right now there's a relatively new system in the game that allows you to ping different locations and mobs so have keybinds for that and try to use them. Have a macro that spams in your party chat for everybody to stack up when you want to drop a heavy healing cooldown let's say like spirit link or dreams breath. Type in your chat to let your group know that you're low on cooldowns if you know that there's a hard pool coming or if it's a specific affix in a week and you want to avoid certain pools, you can also let your tank know. You can even make a macro to let your team know that they need to use their personal defenses for the next mechanic because you don't have a cooldown for it. And then of course try to reflect all of this into your gameplay as well. Be very aggressive with using your interrupts and CC to help your group. 
and be a little self-critical about it because there's so many times where I died to a mob casting a bolt at me and nobody interrupting and I would get angry that the tank or the DPS didn't interrupt but then I would notice that my own interrupt was actually up so I could have interrupted that mob and saved myself. In other words, try to carry the responsibility of the run and salvage the situations yourself and don't try to run away from responsibility and let others do the hard job. Having said that though, I'm gonna add one more tip here and I noticed something that many times we're gonna overlap our interrupts in a pug and as a healer it's usually a good idea not to go first. The tank and the DPS are usually trying and racing to interrupt first so saving your interrupt for a later stage is usually the play, although that depends on the pug. Here I would recommend to have an add-on like Omni CD which is not only going to show you the CDs that the other team members have available but it also has a list of the available interrupts and their cooldowns. Using that we will let you know if you overlapped or if you are the only available interrupt in a certain situation. Alright the next tip goes without saying but you need to keep learning and you need to be very knowledgeable about many things in the M plus dungeon starting with your own class. As mentioned earlier there's no shortcuts and there's no way for you to jump straight into 30s you have to learn your class going to the dungeons and not only getting gear but also getting the knowledge that you need to play the higher keys. And of course to achieve that you can watch a lot of tutorials, there's a lot of resources on YouTube, you can go on Twitch and talk to streamers and all of that is great but at the end of the day the best way to learn is just to play and play more. It doesn't matter how many hours of tutorials you've watched on YouTube, the more keys you play the better you're going to become at your class, period. And then as you start going into higher keys you're going to find out what is going to start one shotting you and how you can mitigate those situations. That also goes more to say about learning the dungeons not only the class as having knowledge about both of these is going to help you pre-assign your cooldowns usage both for the trash and the bosses. As some of the harder fights on the higher keys will require you to have a defensive and cooldown for every single mechanic that the boss is going to cast. So in those situations often having knowledge about your class and dungeon is not going to be enough, you also need to know what the other classes and your teammates have at their disposal and probably even request that either before the fight or with a macro during the fight and let them know that you are in a trouble, you don't have cooldowns and they need to help you out either with group cooldowns or personal defensives. If you're interested to find out more on this topic check my channel because I'm making a small series about healing the hardest bosses this season with step by step cooldown and defensive distribution for each of the mechanics that they have which could probably give you ideas and help you in your own runs. It's also very important to keep at the back of your mind the fact that you're actually in a bug. That means that you're not going to time every key, there's gonna be mistakes, there's gonna be depletes, in fact even the high end organized teams don't time every key, they also deplete and make mistakes. So if you're not prepared to go in, make mistakes and learn from them, you're only going to be disappointed at the end. Don't forget that this is just a video game and big part of how enjoyable your journey is going to be comes down to the fact how do you react when the mistakes are going to occur which is inevitably going to happen. As I said personally you should just try to learn from them and also I would say don't try to teach other people how to play. If they make a mistake they either realize that they did and they'll try to fix it for the next pool but if they don't more often than not they will take a piece of advice as criticism, they're going to jump back at you try to find faults in your own gameplay, denying their own mistakes and this is just going to get into a bunch of pointless arguments that is not going to help you time the key whatsoever. So my advice here is try to avoid that and if it happens don't get into pointless arguments, there's always the next key so just get in there and maybe it's going to be a better group which is going to collaborate better and also if it gets to that point I've also ignored people if they're too toxic or too obnoxious, as I said arguing with them is not going to help you time the key and if they're that annoying you don't want to play more keys with them anyway. So putting them on your ignore list is going to save you a lot of trouble and a lot of nerves. The last point that I'm going to make in this section is also you can try to play with people on your level. 
That goes back to the part where I said there's no shortcuts, but I had the opportunity to play with people which are way higher in IO and skill level than myself, and more often than not, this didn't turn out to be a great experience, quite the opposite. So, to keep it short here, pushing high keys and going slow one step at a time is actually going to be better in the long term, it will make your learning process much smoother and it will help you to transition easier to higher and higher keys. At the end of the day though, again, don't forget, it's a video game, so try to enjoy it, have fun and if it becomes too hard, too stressful, unpleasant, then you can just find a different class, push different level of keys, or even take a short break, take a breather and then come back when you're renewed and you have the strength to continue. Having said that though, one big tip is, if you played with somebody and you enjoyed it, you had a good run, etc, you can actually try to either invite them, send them a friend request or just say at the end of the run, hey guys, do you want to continue and play more? A very typical behavior in Pux is, once the key is over, everybody says GG and just leaves the party. But some of the better days and some of the better experiences that I had pugging was when we actually managed to get together with a few other people and run not one but several keys together. Don't be afraid to be the catalyst at the end of the run who actually initiates that behavior. It doesn't hurt to ask and even if people don't want to stay then you can just go and pug your next key whatsoever. The other thing that I would recommend is download OBS, it's free and then record your runs you will find out a lot of things that you can improve by just watching how you played later, or even, as in my case, you can just start a YouTube channel and upload it so other people can give you a hand and tips. Alright, so I think that's enough ranting from me for this video, but if you have different experience, different tips, feedbacks or remarks that you can make about bugging, do let me know in the comments below. I hope this video was helpful to you, I'll see you in the next one, until then, happy bugging! Take care and bye bye.